welcome to Busted Speakers. I'm Ed. I'm Alex. And I'm Cam. And today we're going to be reviewing the umpteenth album by Stephen Malkmus. Uh, this one's under his full name, Stephen J. Malkmus, and it's called Traditional Techniques. Stephen Malkmus, if you don't know, is the singer of a great 90s indie rock band called Pavement, who you've probably heard of if you're a big music fan because they're not exactly obscure. Yeah. And over the last few years, he's kind of hit a creative stride of some different stylistic ventures to what you'd typically hear from him. Because even though he did a lot of work with his band The Jicks in the 2000s and 2010s, most of that wasn't too different from what he was doing in Pavement, maybe a bit folksier, but the songwriting style definitely remained the same. But with his last album, Groove Denied, uh, he ventured into some old-school electronics, which I don't think particularly went down too well. But I'm glad to say that on this album, where he's taken basically a, a straight-up acoustic folk approach to things, uh, the results are a lot better than that album, I'd say. So, what did you guys think of this? Yeah, I, I really liked it. I definitely was happy to see him take on like a fully fledged psychedelic folk attempt mm. or approach in all of these songs. Because as far as I am aware of him, towards the end of Pavement on Terror Twilight, Terror Twilight sort of began to get more into folk a little bit, and as you say, yeah, they dabbled in it, dabbled yeah. in it, and that continued in his solo career. So I'm really happy to hear a fully fledged acoustic guitar mainly. Uh, led folk album from him I'd say this is probably a master class on quality acoustic guitar playing <laughs> because a lot of the times, I'd say half the time these songs don't even have percussion or very little else instrumentally really happy with this album in summation and sometimes I can just close my eyes and think, yeah, this, this could be pavement almost like I catch myself thinking this could be what Pavement are like in 2020 and they actually are doing some reunion shows I don't think that will result in any new music but almost uh, certainly not <laughs> certainly not but you know it's good to see them still friendly enough to do uh, anniversary shows together so that's nice but yeah I'm very happy with this album overall Cam? Yeah I haven't been really keeping up with uh, Stephen, I have a couple of Jix albums and one of his solo albums, as if it's easy to tell the difference between all of them, but that's beside the point. Um, so I hadn't heard uh, Groove Denied before um, preparing for this review, and yeah, it, was, it really caught me off guard. Like, I didn't expect him to go lo-fi indie craft work on us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then after hearing that, I'm like, okay, now I have no idea what he's going to do on the new one. Like, I don't want to say it's, like, traditional country, necessarily, but just, like, a very distinctly country sound to it with all kinds of great country instruments, banjo and dobro and steel guitar and lap guitar, all that good stuff. Um, with even some, uh, some, like, Middle Eastern instruments, if I'm not mistaken, thrown in for good yeah. measure. And... Yeah, there's a little bit of sitar going on. Yeah, so, um, yeah, overall, it left a really good impression on me, so. Yeah, the thing about this album is it's simultaneously one of the simplest albums I've heard in a long time and one of the hardest to review without just talking about it in relation to his previous work, because there's not really a ton going on here. Like, the album is incredibly focused on just delivering fairly melodic, light, airy, pleasant tunes, and it completely succeeds in that. I, I like most of the songs here, but I don't think any of them are, you know, amazing or anything. Basically, uh, if you like Stephen's voice, which is fair enough if you do, because he's got a very distinct, pleasant voice that I yes. haven't heard very many other vocalists sound like him, he can only sound like himself quality acoustic guitar playing and just the same sort of trademark kooky not a whole lot of depth there to his songwriting but still quite uh, enjoyable if you like all of these elements it's pretty much guaranteed you'll like this album in its entirety on some level so that was very much the case with me 
Yeah, I don't want to reduce it to like him playing it safe this time around because it's definitely an interesting stylistic detour in the context of his discography, and I do like this album. Yeah. Um, you could argue that Groove Denied was a much more ambitious effort, and it failed a lot harder, at least in my mind. One of the biggest problems with that album, not only was that the... He attempted to do, like, as Cam mentioned, he referenced Kraftwerk, who are one of my favourite bands of all time, uh, and they're definitely a frame of reference for Steven on the last album, and maybe a bit of Gary Newman as well. It just kind of ended up sounding like amateur hour FL Studio, like I just discovered FL Studio and I'm <laughs> trying to make old school sounding electronic music, and it was just nauseating to me. But one of my biggest problems with that album was a real lack of focus on Steven's part, because you have these electronic tracks which make up, you know, probably about half the track listing. And then he just goes into, like, really pavement-sounding tracks, like um, Come Get Me or Rushing the Acid Frat, which were also the singles from the album. So I don't know if he was just intentionally trying to, like, stay with the typical market that, you know, his music has gained so far by doing songs like that, but it resulted in a really incohesive experience. Traditional techniques, even though its ambitions maybe aren't as lofty and it isn't as much of a detour for Steven compared to his other work, is way more successful because it just has way more focus. Um, every single song has a similar instrumental palette but tries to do something a little bit different. It's just a much better album in my mind. I wanted to touch a little bit on the lyrics, although I don't think there's much you can really read into here, but... I'll get into why I think that's the case and why I think it's not necessarily a problem. One of the things I've always appreciated about Malkmus, on, even on his weaker work, even on Groove Denied, is his approach to writing lyrics. Uh, he seems to be more intent on focusing almost entirely on the general texture of words as opposed to telling a really direct story at any point. That's not to say it's just a bunch of word salad. I don't necessarily think the inherent lack of cohesion in this approach is detrimental to the quality of the music, mm. uh, although I can see how it's definitely a serious point of contention for a lot of people with Pavement or you know anything else he's done. But I think on this album, which is more about light textures and acoustic guitar melodies sort of dancing around lightly, unintrusively... Uh, the approach works way better than it did on Groove Denied. Uh, so when you first told me of this approach, which kind of made sense retrospectively in mm. thinking about all of his stuff, the song that specifically I thought had this approach down was uh, Shadow Band, just because there are some odd high note affectations that he does. Yeah, definitely. At the end of some of the sentences that are kind of cute, but not entirely. <laughs> But yeah, it just that, adds a bit of colour to things, honestly. It kind of worked, and then I, I was thinking, yeah, that's exactly what Ed means. Because I had heard that song at least four times, and that seemed to be a really good example of what you're saying. Like, he's focusing on the on more melodic qualities of words, or trying to enunciate specific parts to make them memorable, more than having explicitly deep lyrics. Yeah, That was a, that was a good song. Anyway, <laughs> Shadow Bend. Yeah, definitely one of the highlights here. Um, I also really like the closer Amberjack. Just really, really pleasant melodies, really pleasant vocal melodies and guitar melodies on that track. My favourite um, song's uh, Greatest Own in Legal History. Yeah, <laughs> that's another one of my favourite tracks here. It's a very sweet song. I don't know if this is exactly what it is, but it feels like he's using like a lawyer's defence allegory to mm. defend in a lover while be also being very literal with the metaphorical comparisons. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of stoic sounding. It's not really like, uh, wow, this is obviously how this song would sound. You kind of just catch on to elements of that idea. So it still fits in with the songwriting style I mentioned before, but it works works really well. And it also had some of the prettiest acoustic guitar playing I've ever heard him do. Mm especially two minutes in, where you get these really nice, as you say, stoic, delicate guitar bending parts. 
Mm. which are very memorable to me. They almost act as the chorus. And as Cam said, it's definitely a slight country feeling with that, with the steel guitar playing. I don't know, it was a very sweet song. That was one of the ones where I could like close my eyes and picture it almost being a pavement song. And when I say that, it is mostly just his vocals and songwriting. This is not alternative rock in any way. No. Or even production-wise at all similar. It's like, a lot of that is like 90s production qualities. This is extremely smooth, pristine, crystal clear production qualities, which is not always how sort of psychedelic folk stuff is produced, but it works well here. Yeah, it's definitely crystal clear, but it's also very soft sounding. This is one of the easiest listens I've ever had to do for one of these podcasts, I'd say. I'm not sure crystal clear is 100% the word I'd use to describe it, mostly because of how cleanness of the fidelity of the recording and production is different from like the mix but it is definitely um mixed very interestingly like i'm comparing um, it directly to the lo-fi noise pop of early okay. pavement it's really crystal clear compared to a lot of that yeah. but yeah it's not exactly like maybe the exact it's not modern sound it's yeah, not modern. Mo- yeah it's... it could definitely be from like another point in time kind of but yeah. I just think all the elements in, in all of the songs are very tangible um, without feeling like they're taking up too much presence in the song. So I, I definitely see what you're saying, Alex, and I agree. Yeah, any favorite tracks, Cam? Um, I think I, um, my favorite track would have to be Christian Man or Shadow Band because both of them, if I haven't um, made this clear by now, I really love songs that are just like loaded up on sounds without being you know cluttered or um overblown and both of these songs um i think had the most um uh, the most additional instruments that all provided their own you know their own hooks and their own uh you know unique textures to their songs especially christian man because he had like two different like not quite lead guitars um going in like each channel on my headphones and I just really loved having that. Just like it's always something else happening without being oppressive about it. Yeah, like Christian Man has like obviously his vocals as the focal point, but like you say, it's got like some really nice acoustic strumming from Stephen, and also some sort of like hardcore electric pedal steel guitar sounding stuff that is played equally. And I I definitely love those little guitar licks on this song. Yes, it's not quite lo-fi, but the it's probably the grimiest moment on the album when that guitar solo comes in on the steel lap guitar on that song, and it's definitely a, a highlight for me. The opener ACC curtain, I'm going to guess is how you say that. I don't know. That's definitely a very strong opener to me. Uh, how did you guys feel about it? Was it like too cluttered? Did it open up the album well? Did it even indicate what was coming? I think it's pretty much the perfect opener for this album, because it's not necessarily the best song here, like, at all. Um, I don't even think I'd put it in, you know, one of my top tracks for this album, although the general level of quality is around about the same throughout. I'm just talking in terms of personal favourites here. Yeah. But, yeah, it's the longest track by far. It surpasses six minutes, and it's also the most... I'd say it takes the elements that Stephen went with when um, approaching uh, the songwriting and the recording of this album and takes them to the greatest extreme you'll hear for the entire album. Yeah. So it was kind of a perfect primer for the rest of the track list. There's also some really lovely female vocals on here. I'm I'm not entirely sure who sang those because there's no there's no credit from what I could find but really lovely, and it's also a really slow and soft, mood-driven song, more than anything, uh, with a lot of technical but very easy-to-listen-to acoustic guitar licks all over it. Yeah, yeah. I just really like the mood on that song. There's, um, like, there's some synths that come up a couple of times on this album, I think, on this track. Uh, they're so distant that you barely even pick up on it really it's it feels like a cohesive part of the mix even though this is the folksiest thing Malkmus has ever done by far 
it's kind of ironic that the electronic elements are so much better implemented on this album than they were on Groove Denied, considering that was him going full on electronic for the most part. Yeah, when I first uh, put this album on and saw it was being dubbed as psychedelic folk, I was thinking, okay, how far is it going to go in that territory? Is that just a loose description when it's generally sort of sinner songwriter stuff more than anything else or not so when i put this on i was like whoa he's gone fully fledged full on head first with that he was definitely aware of what he was doing making that the first track like this has middle eastern sort of even asian instrumentation here and a definitely like a dobro type guitar maybe a sitar as well the first half with the vocals definitely reminded me more of like set the controls for the heart of the sun by pink floyd as a sort of song that just had like a kind of mysterious vibe that was also kind of warm and low-key but kind of very full and interesting musically and then the second half of the song is just letting all the instruments that were back in steven to begin with all come together in a sort of hazy jam that really actually sounded quite beautiful and mysterious to me i might put it actually in my top five for the album just because I feel like this is the fullest, most complete sounding song on the album as far as the sort of psychedelic folk uh, instruments played goes. I definitely agree with that, but I just generally prefer more direct and melodic songs from Steven. And um, while I definitely think that song was a success and I do like it, uh, I just prefer the, the simpler edge stuff that he goes into for pretty much the entire rest of the album. Um, There's only really a couple tracks here that I thought were pretty mediocre, one of them being the song Signal Western. I don't... some of the melodies on that song really just didn't agree with me. Uh, It definitely has elements of, like, western cowboy country music, whatever, in the lyrics and, uh, and the instrumentation, but I don't know, it it didn't really stick with me. Uh, I also thought Cash Up felt like a really weak pavement tune, honestly. It felt like, when I was listening to it, I was kind of just thinking, okay, okay, yeah, you've done this before so many times, this isn't really interesting. But even then, it was hard for me to dislike it because of that. Oh, for sure, for sure, yeah. Yeah, but it's Uh, like retreading similar ground. Unlike Groove Denied, nothing on here is bad which I'm happy to say. I, I honestly wasn't expecting this album to be so pleasant throughout after yeah. his last one. Okay, Cam, so what were your overall final thoughts on this album? I've noticed this pattern that I that like I have mentally a lot of the time where I'm listening to an album and it like leaves a good impression on me. I can remember generally what it sounded like, maybe a couple of songs... But, like, I can't remember everything, and I can't remember a lot of details about it, but it's, like, I know what, like, when I'm done with it, I know what this album is going to give me the next time I come back to it. And, you know, albums like that tend to be good growers. I mean, I just love throwing on some stuff and just being like, oh, yeah, I remember that song. I remember what that one was like. But it happens so often, I can't help wondering if it's, if there's, like, just something in my brain that just isn't like, turned on to properly, you know, remember or evaluate something. So I feel like I do this a lot, or, like, this happens a lot even with the stuff that we review, but it's it happened here, and, you know, like, I remember, you know, the being surprised by it, especially after listening to the previous album, and I remember liking it an awful lot. Um, like, it even, I think, left a bigger impression on me than some Pavement albums, but then, like, how do I rate that i am going to stop rambling stop worrying about things i'm just going to give it a very strong seven for now maybe it could increase to an eight in time but yeah that's just all i have to say about it i guess alex yeah i'll give it a seven too so since i hadn't even kept up with his other solo stuff other than his first two projects which i think i listened to once or twice a piece I was quite interested to see what he was up to these days, and I'm happy I did. This was a really enjoyable, really relaxing, mostly quirky, quintessential Stephen Malkmus release. Definitely a good one 
uh, to check out if you hadn't heard them for a while. I feel like they'll be pretty easy for pavement fans to get into, or even just anyone. I think it's just a quality album. Definitely a lot of songs on here I'm definitely going to be listening to a lot more, like Christian Mann, ACC Curtain, Great Stone and Legal History, Shadow Band, Brainwashed as well, Amberjack. Lots of good songs here. I feel like he's still got it, and I'm pretty much going to keep an eye out for anything else he's released, and I think, like Ed was saying, he's on a pretty good creative streak right now. My problem with this album is, or rather my problem with summarizing my thoughts on it is there's only so many ways you can say this album is just nice <laughs> yeah um it's not shooting for anything particularly ambitious in the grand scheme of things it's just a nice album y- you can tell steven has a lot of experience in the, in making music and in playing acoustic guitar but it doesn't feel show off at any point the the focus seems to be making it as soft and pleasant but also interesting as possible and he definitely rides the line between it being unchallenging but also not boring like i said there's a couple tracks here that i think are pretty forgettable but for the most part it's a solid track list uh i don't think any of these songs are particularly his best or or even near his best if you're a massive pavement fan and you're waiting to hear more you know, amazing songs like Gold Sounds or whatever, you're not going to find anything like that on here. But clearly that's not what he was going for, and honestly I respect that. I really hope he does more with this sound in future, because I think it suits him, and I always liked Steven's voice, so hearing his voice, like the sound of his voice complemented by other similarly nice, soft sounds and instrumentation was... Definitely a good experience. So yeah, I'd say, while I don't love this album, while I don't think it's amazing by any means, uh, I just kind of think it's good. If you're a fan of Stephen Malkmus or Pavement or whatever, and you're not, and you don't find folk music completely abhorrent, <laughs> there's absolutely no reason not to check this out, because it's just a good album. It's just nice. So I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Don't take that as me saying there's, you know, a whole bunch wrong with this album. It's really just a simple, nice, easy listen. So thanks for joining us on Busted Speakers for this review of the new Stephen Malkmus album. Uh, Let us know what you thought of this album in the comments below. Uh, I've been your host, Ed. Bye for now. See you guys. Goodbye.